video today. This is a great question. Clients always ask us, Jason, how can I build a portfolio on a modest income? We know we need to get ahead, all right, and we're comfortable with property, but we've got bills to pay, we've got the mortgage to pay, and we just don't seem to understand how at the end of the day we've got enough funds there to go on and build a successful property portfolio. So what we're going to do today is we're going to run through the five key steps, and the first thing I want to talk to you about is your goals. This is critically important because at the end of the day, you've got to ask the question, yes, I understand you want to get ahead, but what does that really mean? We need to be specific because how can we build a strategy if we don't understand exactly what we're trying to aim for in terms of those outcomes? So for you, is it all about paying the mortgage down more quickly? Is it about tax minimisation, paying less tax? Uh, is it about helping the kids? Is it just a better lifestyle? Are you concerned about retirement? These are the questions you need to ask because the strategies that you implement in terms of the types of properties will impact those financial goals and everyone's different. So for example, if you're looking to retire, the, the types of properties you might want to look at is properties with higher rental yields because you'll need those cash flows in retirement. If you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of equity or cash, you need to also look at properties that are going to generate those capital gains. So you need that equity to cover more deposits on more purchases. So being very clear on your financial goals is so important and it's also a motivator because when you start to think about it, then you can start to get excited. Or for some of you, you might start to get a little bit nervous thinking that maybe you need to get a wriggle on. So either way, very important. The next thing you need to understand is your borrowing capacity. This is so important. Unfortunately, 95% of investors out there only have one or two investment properties. And one of the biggest reasons for this is that the banks simply stop lending them the money. Now, at the end of the day, you have to understand that as an investor, your primary goal is to invest. And what you're actually investing is funds. And where do you get those funds? You get it from the bank. Property is just the investment vehicle that you're using to invest those funds. So your primary goal has to be to have a finance strategy, understand your borrowing capacity, understand what impacts your borrowing capacity. Because the last thing you want to do is buy properties that are going to impact your ability to borrow, and then again the banks shut you down and you can't buy properties. So borrowing capacity, critically important. The other thing that we need to look at is your ability to cover your deposit monies and stamp duties. All right? So ev everything involved with purchasing, uh, which includes your, your deposits on your properties, uh, your stamp duties, legal fees, uh, could be some holding costs, you might have some lender's mortgage insurance that needs to be paid. Now that's very easy uh, to identify uh, if you've got some cash. Uh, it's a little bit harder to identify when you're working with uh, equity. So let's have a look at some quick formulas here. So for most people that are working with equity, uh, that is that they already own a property, it could be their home or they could already have some investment properties. Uh, the equity that's sitting in these properties, you've got to leverage that, okay? Because currently the equity that's sitting there is not working for you. To work out your equity, it's very simple. You just look at the value of your property, you deduct your current uh, mortgages, and whatever's left over, that's what you own, that's your equity. So in order to work out how much of this you can potentially access, a very simple formula is to take the value of your property, be $800,000, times it by 90%, because banks will uh, lend you uh, up to 90%, which is typically the maximum. In this example, uh, we'd be looking at about $720,000. Then you would deduct your current mortgage, which is three hundred, dollars leaving you with about $420,000. So you can potentially access that. But again, that comes back to your borrowing capacity. Because the banks will only allow you to free up that equity if your borrowing capacity is high enough. And typically what do they look at when they look at your borrowing capacity? Simply cash flows. Money coming in, money coming out. They're not looking at how much equity you got, they're not necessarily looking at how much cash. It's more to do with your income and expenses. So once we understand our borrowing capacity, once we understand our equity position, this will also help guide you on the types of properties that you should be buying. So typically, if your borrowing capacity is quite low, you wouldn't want to go out there and purchase properties that have heavy negative cash flows uh, on them. Because if you purchase a property where, for example, your rental income and your tax deductions aren't high enough to cover all the costs on the property, you effectively have to tip in some of your own funds. Therefore, your expenses have increased. Because your expenses have increased, your borrowing capacity will reduce over time because you're taking on a liability. If you purchase properties that are more neutrally geared, uh, these are properties where, for example, the rental yields are a little bit higher, or they could be newer type properties, so you're getting higher tax credits. If your tax credits and your income cover all the costs of owning the property, that means that your financial position has remained neutral. Therefore, your borrowing capacity hasn't been affected too much. 
And then of course there's cash flow positive properties. Uh, these are typically properties that are located in the outer areas or regional areas. And what's happening there is the capital gains aren't as strong, but the rental yields keep increasing with the CPI index and inflation. Uh, and then of course if they're newer properties, you've got those tax credits, you can end up with some cash in your pocket. But you're just going to understand that your opportunity cost there is that you might not be getting the same sort of capital gains. All right. So your borrowing capacity and your equity position will also help identify the types of properties that you should be purchasing. The next thing that we need to look at once we've sort of matched the types of properties and their cash flows to our current financial position is using this master facility structure. The master facility structure is essential for making sure that when you build your portfolio, you can do it in a way where your portfolio can operate independently uh, in terms of the cash flows without affecting your current lifestyle. So the first step here is to release the equity that you have. Or for some of you watching this video, you might not have equity, you might be starting with cash. What we set up is we set up this master facility. We use some of the equity from your property, or if you're using cash, it could be just cash sitting in an offset. We separate it. As you can see, we've got a line here. So this, this account here has nothing to do with your mortgage, right? Your mortgage is your personal debt, and you need to just keep paying down your uh, mortgage as quickly as possible. The quicker you pay down the mortgage, the, the, the quicker you increase your borrowing capacity because you're paying down that non-deductible debt. So we need to get rid of that. With the funds that we have available from your equity or some cash that you put in a master facility, you can use those funds to then purchase your property. So for example here we've got a property uh, with a value of 500000 We can do a 90% loan to value ratio on that so we can put a 10% deposit down which is your 50000 You'll have some costs there at approximately 20000 It'll obviously be a little bit higher if you're buying an established property because you'll be paying uh, the full 5% for stamp duties. Uh, with some of the newer properties or the off-the-plan properties, you don't have those, those higher costs. But you can see here you've got some average costs there of about 70. That can come from this master facility. So what this means is that this facility will cover your uh, establishment costs. It can also cover things like lenders' mortgage insurance or your holding costs. And once you have this property in play, all the rental income and all the tax deductions will fund into this facility and all your cash flows will come out to support the property. So your master facility in this loan structure means that you don't have to find extra cash each week to support this portfolio, and that's really important. Any extra cash that you have, I want you to pay down your personal debts, get them down as quickly as you can. This portfolio using the master facility will manage all the cash flows over here. So this gives you a lot of confidence to grow your portfolio, because number one, it doesn't matter for example, if you lose your job, because you never had to put any money into this portfolio. You just leverage off an offset facility that you might have against your mortgage to get you through to your next job. This portfolio will look, up, look after itself. It doesn't matter if you have a situation where you're between tenancies and you don't have rental income coming in, because you've got a buffer here in your master facility to cover any incidental costs as you're growing your portfolio over time. And then most importantly, in the future, as your properties are increasing in value, we must always pull that equity across into the master facility, which will help cover deposit monies and stamp duties to buy property number two, to buy property number three, to buy property number four. So as you, as you can see, guys, when it comes to building a property portfolio, it's not as simple as just jumping on realestate.com, finding a property in your local area that you happen to like or you think looks nice, and go out and put your hand up in an auction. All right? In order to ensure that you end up like the 5% the, the of investors out there that go on to build very successful properties of say half a dozen properties or more, you have to have a professional strategy. And that's why number five, professional advice is so important. So getting professional advice will help you fast track your results. And we've got so many ebooks on all these different topics, we've got plenty more videos where we go into a little bit more detail. But if you're thinking about how to build your portfolio, um, get educated, watch more of our videos, and understand that when it comes to building a portfolio on a modest income, it is achievable. You only have to open up the investor mags and you hear about all these stories of single mum with a couple of kids and now she's got half a dozen investment properties, etc. But you've got to follow the rules. You've got to understand your goals. You have to understand your borrowing capacity because that will teach you what sort of properties to buy. You have to understand your establishment costs because again, if you don't have a lot of funds, you can't look at what we call a high cost strategy. A high cost strategy is, for example, buying an established property for six or seven hundred thousand. Um, you've got to put your ten percent deposit down, then you've got to pay full stamp duties on the purchase price, and then you might want to add some value to it. Um, you could be, you could require as much as one hundred thirty or one hundred forty thousand dollars to do that. 
or you could go a low cost strategy where you can put a smaller deposit down and, and target something with lower cost. All right, so all these considerations need to be taken into, into account. You use the master facility structure to separate your investment portfolio from, from your home and, and your cash flows over here. So that gives you the confidence to go on and grow the portfolio and it protects your position. And you get professional advice. And out of that professional advice, if you've got a modest income, you know, target properties that are affordable. Don't go out there and spend seven or eight or nine hundred thousand dollars on investment property. That's crazy. You might keep your purchase prices in around that sort of four hundred to up to about five fifty, because if you want to get into some of the the, the, the high growth type locations, you're going to have to spend a little bit, little bit more. Target properties that are more neutrally geared or slightly cash flow positive. All right, so neutrally geared properties tend to give you the best of both worlds. The, the rental incomes and tax deductions are usually high enough to cover your cost to protect your borrowing capacity. Um, but usually we can target some growth corridors that you, so you can get those capital gains as well. So they give, give you the best of both worlds. And protect your borrowing capacity. This is so important, guys, because if you don't manage your borrowing capacity, you simply go to the bank, it could be your second it could be your second purchase, it could be your third, and the bank shuts you down. They go, look, sorry, we can't lend you the money. So in order to protect that, know your borrowing capacity, buy the right types of properties to support your borrowing capacity, but also, too, pay down your personal debts as much as possible. So why have, it, why have credit cards, three or four credit cards, with credit cards there, say, 60000 what, what do you need that for? You've got to understand that a $60,000 credit card debt accounts for a $240,000 debt. That's how the bank sees it, because credit card debt can be calculated at 20%, so you times it by four. So if you're happy with you know, a couple of credit cards in the family of, say, three or $4,000 each, that's going to massively improve your borrowing capacity. Uh, any personal debts that you have on high interest rates can be refinanced into your mortgage or your equity at a much lower interest rate and pay down in the mortgage, all right? Because the more you reduce your personal debts over here, the stronger it bumps up your borrowing capacity. So again, you can, you can ensure that you keep getting those, the, the, the borrowings and the funds from the banks so that you can keep growing this uh, portfolio. So obviously guys, all these strategies, we get a lot more detail uh, with you. This is just a quick video, just to give you a quick overview on what's possible. Um, plenty of eBooks on this, plenty of videos. We run workshops. Um, Guys, get educated because all of you can do this. You just need the right confidence, you need the right education, and you need the support. Thank you.